Hello, in this short video, I would like to give another brief fast Fourier transformation or FFT tutorial. As you can see, uh, some person from Indonesia wrote me an email asking for a discussion about FFT analysis and the person has data that uses a time of 0.1 seconds measured over two seconds. So I assume this is the time step. This is like, let's say the total recording time. Um, and has watched one of my MATLAB tutorials on YouTube. Um, the question is, which one? <laughs> this would be interesting to know. Okay, and why the frequency is recorded as zero hertz? Mm, there's probably some issue with the analyzers there. So the question is how to modify the programs and which parts should I replace? Um, and this is uh, hopefully the thing that I would like to answer in my video here so let's change into matlab let's make my camera a little smaller so i have the data file that was attached to the email here and let's open it outside of matlab just in some um, text editor so here it is and as you can see it's yeah a two column file this is probably the time these are the time steps, I would assume, and this is the other data. No, no, um, no information what this really is and what is the unit. Um, I assume this is in seconds and this is something else, maybe volts, maybe some acceleration in meter per second square. No one knows. And as you can see, it's 251 uh, data points measured from 0 to 25 seconds. So not. Um, two seconds as mentioned in the email but obviously 25. okay so let's change back into matlab and let's load this file into a new variable that i will call raw data and so here we will load this file and just omit the output and then you can see we get a matrix that has this 251 rows and two columns and so the first column um, would be the time so if we take all the rows from the first column uh, it would be a column vector i don't like to have it as a column vector so i transpose it and so then we get all the times into a row vector as you can see here and i will do the same with our data i'm not sure what this data is so i will just call it x x of time and this is the second column of this vector i will also transpose it from a column vector into a row vector and now we have the second vector here and so the first thing that i would always do is to plot this data and there's the plot that always appears on my second screen. Let's uh, fix this here to my uh, MATLAB GUI. And so you can see that, okay, it's something, of course, that changes over time. This is the time. These are the 25 seconds. This is um, the quantity, whatever, that was measured as a function of time in the corresponding unit. And yeah looking at this i would say okay uh, we start somewhere here then uh, something is going down something is going up uh, we have some peak here and then it seems like that it's repeating here but a full cycle let's say would be from here to maybe here right um or to 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 maybe to this place can i mark this right so I would say probably from here to here, this might be one full cycle and then it would repeat with this dip going down. And if you want to do some FFT analysis, it's always, um, and you have a um, periodic signal, something that replicates or more or less replicates after a certain amount of time, it's always a wise decision to capture um, full periods of this because the problem is that the, the FFT analysis will assume that whatever you have whatever you have measured, whatever you, you, you give in there, you put in there, will be replicated after one full cycle and will be repli or will be replicated after whatever you have captured. So um, after here it would assume that you jump down to this value and then you repeat 
what happens here and it's not really what your signal does so um, that is why i would suggest or what i would do is i would um, because these two points are very distinct i would cut the data from here to here and just use whatever is in this period from here to here um, and then put this because this is this would replicate this looks like one period of time of the signal put this into the fft um, this from my point of view gives gives more meaningful results so we need to find this place and we need to find this place there in the data so uh which at which uh, index the time is 2.9 seconds okay this is at 30 and at which position the time is 17.8 seconds this is at 179 so now i would take all our time values and just use the values within this range from 30 to 179 yeah, and of course if we had we have seen we have time steps in 0.1 seconds so um the 2.9 second is the 30th time step right 29 plus 1 and this is um 17.8 seconds is the 179th time step so um let's limit the times to this and i will omit the output and let's do the very same thing for our time function um, and just to make it look better um, and because i'm a real scientist i will uh, label the axis and say on the x label we have time in seconds and on the Y label, we have mm, whatever our signal in some unit. Um, and maybe we want to have a grid also on this plot here. Okay, so um, then I would suggest to take a look at these times. And so now our time, our time vector if I just take a look at the first 10 values, the time vector will not start with zero, but it should start with zero for my FFT analysis for my function that I will be using later on here, this Fourier function. If I open this up in some editor, um, it says somewhere the first time should be zero. So um, let's make the first time zero. Let's say our all our times from all our times, we will just subtract the first time step. And we get all the time values here. So now it starts with zero and we end with 14.9. So this would mean, and this is probably the case for the signal, even if it's not really mentioned here in the message, that the periodic time might be 15 seconds. Um, I, I, I would say this, this should make sense. So now we can just plot it again. So then we have one full cycle, do our axis labeling and grid. And we can see now it looks more reasonable because, okay, this is where our signal starts. It goes up, it has this peak, it goes down. And from here, if you remember, then it would replicate each other. And we would once again start with this one here going down. And there would be just a very small jump between this value and this value here. And this is probably um, reasonable. Okay, so now we have something meaningful that we can put inside the fast Fourier transform, the FFT or the discrete Fourier transform. It will not be really a fast Fourier transform because we have this 150 points. Um, so let's check the function. This is how the function works. So we give this function the time values and or the time steps and the values of the function as a function of time and we need to give a mode and the mode is if we have a continuous replicating signal it should be sinus and then we get back the frequencies and the corresponding spectrum and um, in this mode the spectrum the output will be in the very same unit that we put in so if this would be volt then we would also get back volt here um, okay, so let's copy this. 
and go back to the MATLAB prompt and insert it here. So the mode should be sinus and I will omit the output. Time is time. This is our time function. We will get back frequencies and we will get back the corresponding spectrum. So let's run it and you can see, okay, uh, we have inserted 150 time steps and we get back 70 five plus one plus the dc part or plus the highest frequency however you would call it we we get let's say half of this plus one uh, frequency points and the corresponding spectrum and now i will open up a second figure and also the second figure appears on my second screen and we'll also try to put this here i'm not sure how i can um, show both figures at the same time, but obviously I need to switch between them. Okay, so in, in the second figure, let's now plot our frequencies and the magnitude, the amplitude spectrum, um, because the spectrum values, as you can see, it's something complex, um, contains real and imaginary part or magnitude and phase, because you need to um, include the phase shift of each um, spectral component or you in a real an imaginary part you would need to have like what is the sine component what is the cosine component and um, yeah I would just plot the amplitude spectrum this is done using this function here and so there it is and let's also label the axis here so um, on the x-axis we have our frequency in hertz and on the y-axis, we have uh, whatever our signal spectrum in some unit and in the very same unit that we use for the time function and maybe would also like to have a grid here. Okay, and so now we can check. Okay, we have some DC part of 0 0.02 something um, and this corresponds to... Yeah, like the DC part that we have here, um, th there's a difference by a factor of two uh, between them. But because if you would take the average of this one here, right, if we would take the mean of our um, time function, uh, we get something negative. And that's why... Um, Interestingly, uh, okay, well, we get something positive here, but this is because we took the magnitude. Um, and as you can see, you get double the value here. Um, if we would really take it, uh, take a look at the first value of our spectrum, um, then this is also negative. And this is, if we divide this by two, we get the very same value that we ha had before also for the mean. Okay, so this is the meaning of at the frequency zero, I, 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 to be honest, I still not really understand the question. Why is the frequency recorded as zero? Of course, there is some, um, we also get a value back at the frequency zero, but this is the DC part of the signal. This is the twice of the average of the signal, the, the DC offset, the DC component of the signal. Okay. And I mean, now we have lots of other frequency components here. And the, let's say the smallest non-zero frequency that we get here in our spectrum is 0 0.06666 hertz. And this corresponds to the periodic time. So if we would check the last time in our um, signal is 14.9. But then we would need to add another time step. And the time step would be the time of the second time. So our periodic time would be 15 because this is when the signal would replicate. And uh, one over this gives us the first frequency in the spectrum, which totally makes sense. And this is also the highest um, spectral component here, which somehow makes sense because if you would look at this, you could see, okay, this is like a w one way to recreate the signal is you need one very slow um, sinusoidal or cosinusoidal wave with a certain phase shift that does this. It's going down, it's going up, it's going down again. 
Um, and this would correspond to this largest peak here. And you can see the amplitude there is something like 0.1. And this would also fit to what we have here, right? It's um, if we have the slow signal, it's it has an amplitude of something like 0.1 going up and 0.1 going down. So this nicely makes sense. And then um, there's another component at 0.2 hertz and another major component at 0.333 hertz and maybe a last important component at 2.5 something hertz. Maybe really at 2.5, but we have not really um, a data point there due to our time sampling. And there's also a quite high component at the highest frequency here, 5 hertz. And the 5 hertz is uh, comes from so the highest frequency in your spectrum corresponds to the smallest time um, that you have in time domain and so the smallest time that we have in time domain is our time step is the second time this is 10 hertz um, but we can only sample half of that due to the sampling theorem because um, if you want to sample some sinusoidal wave you always need to go like up and down and up and down um, so you need to have um, yeah we would need to um, yeah let's say divide this by two um, or multiply this time by two to get to the highest frequency that we have there in our spectrum and that's more or less practical it. Um, so um, the frequency is not recorded as zero. There is some zero frequency component in there, but of course in the spectrum you also get all the other frequencies. Smallest frequency depends or corresponds to the longest time in your time domain. The highest frequency in the spectrum corresponds to the smallest time in your time domain. And another way to display this spectrum would be to have a log log plot so let's go back to the last plot command and change it into a double logarithmic scaling and then the spectrum would look like this so it would be good to um, add labels once again and here you can also see of course on the logarithmic scale we, we cannot have the dc component anymore um, so this is the smallest frequency this is this was the 0 0.2 hertz, 0 0.33 hertz. This was the two point. Oh no, there's something at one hertz. Interestingly, this was the 2.5, approximately 2.5 thing, and this is the the five hertz component. I would say these are the yeah these peaks here. These are the major components in the spectrum that you would also somehow see here. So there's. Um, yeah, something like a slower oscillation and then there's of course this very rapid oscillation and to improve this FFT analysis what I would suggest is so for me it still looks a little undersampled so the the curve here the signal is very edgy and very um, spiky and um, I would invest more time steps a higher sampling rate um, because yeah, it, it, it still looks a little undersampled. Um, usually if something is going up and down and going up and down, you want to have at least five points, 10 points for each maximum and for each minimum so that you see, um, okay, if, if you see that it's getting round, then you have enough points because here you never know. It, it might be higher here. It might be higher there. If you just sample at this point, no one knows what really happens in the vicinity of this point. Um, so I would say this signal is still undersampled. Um, I would try to lower the time step, increase the sampling frequency. And I would also try to do the original measurement in a way that a full period of time or let's say two, five, ten um, full periods of time of this repetitive um, continuous periodic signal are captured because then you don't need to have this cutting or this windowing to something that looks like probably a full period of the signal.